Can everyone see that? Okay, so, and can everyone hear me? Yes, sorry about this. It's, I'm gonna do, it'll have to be really, really quick. I'm really sorry about this. I've been waiting all afternoon to start. Anyway, my talk is on Gandhi. Um, I just press this to move forward. Okay, um, and as the title says, it's the Tartan Gandhi, Gandhi and Scotland. Um, I'll begin by a really brief introduction, even briefer now, because we have less time. But essentially, I'm trying to look at Gandhi's public statues and busts in the United Kingdom, starting from the 1960s through to 2019, which is when the, the only full-size statue of Gandhi's was erected in Scotland. I'll talk about the first major installation in London very briefly in 1968, go quickly through some of the other installations, literally uh, a few minutes on each, and then have a few concluding remarks. And of course, Gandhi is no stranger to everyone, particularly on in this conference milieu. Um, he was also no stranger to controversy during his lifetime. And even today, he continues to divide opinion. He himself was a man of deep personal faith, but believed passionately in the faith of, in all faiths. He believed in hating the sin, not the sinner, and that's why he counted the British amongst his best friends. He was an astute politician and negotiator. He underlined the importance of peace and nonviolence. And consequently, over the last century or so, he's become really uh, one of the most highly recognized public figures, global figures. And there are statues to Gandhi in over 70 countries worldwide. Focusing just on England, Wales and Scotland, Edinburgh has a small bust of Gandhi which was erected in 1997. Hull had one six years after that. Leicester has a really big one. Uh, Leicester of course has a huge South Asian population that was erected in 20, 2009. And in fact, um, in it, it, there was considerable um, demonstrations um, when Black Lives Matter movement started around that Gandhi statue in Leicester. I don't have time to go into that, but people were protesting about Gandhi and particularly his record in South Africa. London has two, and I'll talk about the first in a minute, which was erected in 1968, and the second much more recently in 2015. Cardiff also has statues, for instance, in Cardiff Bay in 2017. Manchester has a statue which was erected outside the cathedral. Um, there's details online about that. It, you know, there's private funding um, that went into that uh, uh, statue erection, um, and it was happening post the horrific bombing that we had in Manchester Arena. Uh, many of you may be aware of that, um, the terrorist attacks in 2017. And this statue was meant to represent strength, decency, and reinvigorate the sense of community that had been fractured so much by that horrific you know, accident. Now, of course, Gandhi did visit Britain I lived in Britain as a student. Um, he visited at least five times. And he, in fact, was briefly in Manchester, uh, but he didn't stay long there. And finally, of course, the one I want to focus on, 2019 in Scotland. Now, the very first one, uh, Gandhi's statue was in London, and there's an image of, of that statue in Tavistock Square. It was donated. The site was donated by the St. Pancras Borough Council. Uh, th there was no direct government funding. It was very much uh, through donation. All sorts of people uh, contributed to it, including someone like Lord Mountbatten, for instance. But there were a whole range of Indian industrialists and sympathizers amongst the British. Uh, the Labour MP Reginald Sorensen was really the main player behind this. He had met Gandhi in 1931 and 46. He was deeply impressed by his ideals. And 
the design was meant to incorporate many Indian aesthetics, though the the, the sculptress was Freda Brilliant, uh, you know, and she's well known for making sculptures of lots of other Indian nationalists. And the prime minister inaugurated that. Now this Tavistock Square statue had a very positive, largely positive reception, including in the press. Um, and in fact, quite interestingly, there was a large wreath raid by representatives of the South African fighters against apartheid. Um, along with lots of other people. So, you know, I'm rushing through because I know I'm, I'm very late, but it's really important to emphasize what a very positive response in Britain and indeed in, in sort of Western Europe um, happened at the time this statue was erected. And as Reginald Sorensen said, that it's a visible reminder in the heart of London of a man who strove to change political conflict with moral values and goodwill akin to the highest Christian ethic. Of course, he was compared then and as he has been since to leaders like Martin Luther King. In 2015, London sees another major statue go up and there's the image of that in Parliament Square. This was by a Scottish sculptor, Philip Jackson, Lord Magnan Desai and Prime Minister David Cameron were present at the, at the unveiling of the statue. However, interestingly, this particular statue, as I write over there, was targeted by graffiti and by protests at the time of the Black Lives Matter movement in 2020. And the word racist was daubed on the plinth base of this statue. At that time, as I mentioned a moment ago, there were also protests in Leicester and Manchester and so on. And this was really largely linked to Gandhi's record in South Africa his, in his very early years before the First World War. But what I really want to focus on in the remaining couple of minutes, and I hope I'm doing okay for time, I'm really rushing through this guide three. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. But I mean, I'm, I'm going to try and, and focus on this for the next few minutes and that's it. This Gandhi statue in Air Town Hall was inaugurated um, and this was something that had never happened before. Now I mentioned a moment ago that there are um, busts, small busts, plinths with small busts dedicated to Gandhi, for instance, in Edinburgh, but never a lifestyle statue. So this is a first and it was momentous at the time. This was in 2019, in September 2019. And the reason was that it was commemorating the 150th birth anniversary of Gandhi. It was six feet, it's six feet, four inches tall. And the sculptor here is an Indian, uh, Gautam Pal. And the funding for this particular statue, as well as several other statues that were made at that time to commemorate Gandhi came from the government of India. And I think that's quite, quite interesting to point out. Nevertheless, uh, there was very positive political support and the South Ayrshire Provost, Helen Mooney, spoke about the proud similarity, she said, between South Asia and India and the special link between Gandhi and Robbie Burns because both, she claimed, had fought against social injustice and had used their unique gifts to carve out their place in world history. So this is quite important, this connection that Scotland rather than United Kingdom or London centric approach. And I think this is quite important that they chose to make that connection with Robbie Burns. Now, in general, the press comment, and I've mentioned, given a few over there, specifically looking at local newspapers in Scotland, but also the BBC, which in general emphasised the, the idea that the growing bond uh, between Scotland and India, as the BBC put it, the air advertiser talked about him as, and this is interesting, the use of language, an Indian civil rights campaigner, not an Indian nationalist, not an Indian imperialist, not an Indian freedom fighter, but a civil rights campaigner. 
And the Ayrshire Daily News talks about his message as one of peace over power. And in fact, so the idea is a very generalized respect to Gandhi in terms of everything that he stood for, but trying to, I believe, make the message truly global in its appeal. And, and I think subtly delink it from the anti-imperial uh, side of the message. Clearly, uh, that is important. And the, the idea that Britain now is far more sensitive to this sense of sort of how do we respond to our colonial past? And, you know, I'm, I'm being very, very brief because of time pressures, but we can talk about that. But I think this is quite interesting that the idea of delinking it from that imperial past is very, very center stage. The Hindustan Times, just to give you a quick example of an Indian newspaper, uh, noted how near the statue was a plaque bearing Gandhi's words, there is no way to peace, peace is the way. Now, it's interesting that this statue is not erected in a public square. It's actually inside the town hall where in Ayrshire. It is a public space. It is open to the public, but it is not in, uh, if you like, uh, in a visibly, if you like, easily accessible place. I don't know if I'm making too much of that, but it's interesting. But it, it's quite interesting also, I think, that if you probe a bit deeper, as I did, and I contacted the government, the Airshare Council website does have a detailed and explicit recognition of the sort of arguments that the uh, Black Lives Matter movement protesters were making and had been making from 2020, this idea about the critique of Gandhi's actions in South Africa at the very start of his political career. So they weren't trying to whitewash it, but I found it interesting that there was definitely information, if you wish to probe it, uh, about trying to balance the history books, if you like. And I think that's quite, quite interesting. So I, I know I'm over my 10 minutes and I'm really grateful for allowing